Hello, my name is Miguel Fernandez and I am a PhD student at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. I am here to talk about this project that is called Prediction of Bacterial Interactomes Based on Genome-Wide Coevolutionary Networks, an updated implementation of the Context Mirror Approach. So first of all, I will give a little bit of an introduction in what proteins are and how uh, coevolution is related to them. Then I will show you the implementation that we did. And finally, we will have a brief discussion on the results we got so far. So this is a protein, if you imagine the green line to be a sequence. And we know that this sequence is responsible for maintaining the protein structure and that the protein structure is ultimately responsible for the protein function. So if we were to introduce a mutation into this sequence, the, the structure will be altered and the function won't be carried out correctly. So we can say that these sequence regions that are critical for maintaining the protein structure have to be maintained in evolution, right? Now we can apply the same principle to protein-protein interactions because these are just physical interactions between two structures. So again, if we were to introduce a mutation in one of those sequences, uh, one of the structures will be altered and the function won't be carried out correctly. So we can say the same. These sequence regions that are critical for maintaining protein contacts must be maintained in evolution. Other, in other words, they have to undergo co-evolution. Now the fun part is that, that you can actually look into protein sequences and find these regions that are critical for maintaining these structures and contacts, as you can see in the image. And you can look for um, co-evolutionary patterns between these regions because you will observe correlated compensatory changes. And we can extract this coevolutionary information to, la to try and find what proteins are evolving together and therefore probably are related at some functional or structural level. Now, this uh, is not something that we came up with. This has been studied several times over the years and was also a critical part in the development of AlphaFold 2 and also some sequence-based software that aim to predict protein-protein interactions, one of which is the one that I show you here, which is the inspiration of this project in, in which they um, explain how you can integrate as much coevolutionary uh, information as possible to predict protein-protein interactions. So with this in mind, we thought maybe we can provide an, an updated implementation with, of this method, benchmark it using Escherichia coli, and then perform a comparative analysis uh, on different bacterial species. Uh, this would be the overall pipeline that we developed uh, for this method. It is divided into three steps, and we will go step by step to see how it works. So the first step would be the comparison of phylogenetic trees. Uh, essentially, you feed the program with a number of proteins, and for each of the proteins, we will perform an orthologous search. And in order to do this, we will do the reciprocal vested approach. The idea is that uh, for each of the proteins, we will end up with an orthologous set for, um, and then uh, because we are looking for binary interactions, uh, we are going to make all possible pairs of these orthologous sets. And for further analysis, we will only keep those pairs of proteins that share orthologs in at least a thousand common species. So in this case, we took these two proteins, right? They shared orthologs in this number of species. We reduce the orthologs sets, we align them, and we build a phylogenetic tree out of it. The idea is that now we can make this phylogenetic tree into a distance matrix so that we can vectorize and compute the Persian correlation uh, between them. Now, this version correlation is essentially how similar these two phylogenetic trees are. So the higher the correlation, the more similar the phylogenetic histories of these two proteins is, right? So we can do this for all possible combinations of proteins and create a matrix that we call the tree-tree matrix because we are comparing phylogenetic trees. This was proven to uh, predict many protein-protein interactions, but with a very high rate of false positives mainly because it is treating every protein per as independent. And we know that proteins interact with many proteins at the same time. So this is why uh, we introduce the second step. In the second step, we integrate even more coevolutionary information because now, instead of correlating phylogenetic trees, we will be correlating coevolutionary profiles, which is just a vector that tells us the relationship between one protein and all of the proteins at the, at the same time. We will recompute all of the protein, all of the correlations, and and then uh, store it into a new matrix. And because this matrix is comparing profi coevolutionary profiles, we will call it the profile profile matrix. The thing is that this reduced uh, the number of false positives because it is correcting for background evolution, which is basically a uh, shared evolutionary events that are common to all proteins. But now we are not addressing anything uh, related to non-specific interactions. This last issue is addressed in the last uh, step, which consists of making a matrix 
in which in the rows we have all possible interactor pairs and in the columns we have all proteins that are present in the proteome because we want to see how much of this interaction is explained by uh, every individual protein. We do this by calculating the partial correlation between each possible instance um, and in the end this was proven to correct for non-specific interactions and this provides us with our output which is like is something like this uh, for each protein interaction that we predict a number of correlations associated to it. Now this was a lot but this was uh, the complete implementation and as I told you we benchmarked it with Escherichia Coli. here I showed you a little bit of the numbers but if you focus here at the end, you can see that we made a lot of predictions, which is what we wanted. We want to make as many predictions as we want and then rank them according to how confident we are. In order to see whether these predictions are true or not, we created a combined database taking information from different sources and then we calculated the precision for the uh, predictions that we were most confident about. The thing is that before we knew which predictions are the best, we have to develop a ranking system and we, we tested different ways, but in the end, we found out that the best way was uh, to make an average as a representative of the third matrix and then integrate this average with the information taken from the second matrix to create some kind of uh, combined score that acts as a confident score to see how confident context mirror is about each of these interactions, right? So we, pre we calculated the precision for this uh, ranking system, which is the, uh, shown here as purple. And you can see how our mm, top scoring predictions, which are the ones that we are most confident about, are actually true positive. So they are present in the databases. And as we move down the list, uh, the precision decreases, which is what we expected. But because uh, we are using these lists of proteins, we can play with them uh, as much as we want. And we found a way to analyze these, sequen these proteins or these predictions so that we can extract protein complexes. The idea is that we can modulate how many proteins we are allowing to influence every protein pair. Uh, so if you uh, increase the number of proteins that you are allowing to influence to every prediction, uh, as long as you increase this number, you will find more and more and more protein-protein um, interactions until you end up constructing um, or extracting from the prediction uh, any protein complex that you want. And finally, because we wanted to give this a little bit of a structural scope, uh, we took different subsets of interactions from this ranked list that I just showed you and used AlphaFold Multimer to assess whether these structures are suitable for interaction or not, right? And we do this by calculating the PDOC Q score that tells us whether these two structures are a valid protein-protein interaction or not. In this figure, you can see how our confident score in the y-axis is related to the PDOC Q, which is the confident score of AlphaFold Multimer. And at first glance, you can see how all of the true positives, which are the predictions that we made and are present in the databases, are a very confident uh, predictions in our system and also very uh, confident interactions uh, for AlphaFold Multimer. But for you to see it more clearly, we took one of our top predictions, which is one of the predictions we are most confident about with a 9.92 confident score. And AlphaFold Multimer found that these two structures are very likely to interact with a PDOC Q of 0 0.73. Then finally, as a final check, uh, we looked into experimentally de de derived databases and we found that this is actually a real interaction. Whereas when we took uh, one of the lowest scoring interactions here with a combined score of minus 1.2, AlphaFold Multimer was unable to find any suitable interface between these two structures. And also, this wasn't present in any uh, database whatsoever, so this further corroborates our prediction and our ranking system. Finally, as a take-home message, I want to say, stress uh, how this software can be used not to predict a full interactome with a very high confidence, but to get an overview of how proteins behave inside uh, a bacteria. So you can better direct your time and your economic resources in the study of this uh, species. Finally, I want to thank you for your attention and I encourage you to have a look at the poster presentation that is also available online and to get back to me with any suggestions or uh, questions that you might have on the theme. Thank you again and have a nice day.